Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is a video talking about the so-called, you know, uh, South Park uh, controversy with uh, the depiction of Prophet Muhammad as a bear and other things. And it is not something new that, you know, these people come to try to ridicule. And, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because we speak about freedom of speech a lot. And we claim and we brag as Westerners that we are the pinnacle as as of society of intelligence of you know of, of of you know dealing the right ways our societal rights our societal dealings with each other are should be or are at highest you know as we think from a point of view of of uh, advancing of of evolution of society and of rights and so on and so forth. Yet people still you know pull dumb you know stunts. Right? I mean, we claim that we're so reasonable, so rational, we're so amazing, so smart, yet we do stupid things. So, and number one, I want to first of all say, from a Muslim point of view, from a Sharia point of view, no one has the right to take the, the law into their hands. Okay? Especially after Prophet Muhammad was, you know, died, especially that there's no Khalifa, no ruler, okay? No Qadi to say, to exemplify or to say, agree or something or to reject something, there's no Khalifa even to decree such sentences as, for example, what Theo, Theo Van Gogh happened after their, you know, the, 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 the movie uh, submission, and so on and so forth. No one has the right to take matters into their hands, no matter what the uh, religious ruling is for someone who bashes. I'm not talking about insults. I'm talking about bashing and ridiculing and saying things that are, you know, out of this world about a prophet, not just Prophet Muhammad, okay, about a prophet. Uh, no one has the right to do anything, okay? No one has. Only a Khalifa would have the, the ruling. The person who is accused would be trialed and so on and so forth. This is in a Muslim state only. So people taking laws into their hands and causing more problems for the Muslims in as minorities in non-Muslim lands, that is totally against Islam, totally irrational, illogical, un-Islamic, period. Now, let's go to these people, the writers of South Park, who claim that they're, you know, I mean, they're so funny, you know, and look how, how, how funny they are. Personal story segment tonight, the program South Park is a controversial satirical show that often mocks religion. Last week, South Park went after the prophet Mohammed. There's somebody I've always wanted to meet face to face. If you could get him to show up in your town. Sure, who is it? We can get anybody for you. Mohammed, the prophet of the Muslim faith. That's tricky. If Muhammad appears in South Park, we get bombed. That's yeah, right. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Yeah. We don't know that. Maybe enough time has passed that now it's okay to show Muhammad. But See, like people, even in the cartoon, they know, they've seen what happened, the aftermath of the drawing of the cartoons in, in, in Denmark. They know what happened. They know that there's people out there. And there's reason for that. There, there's people out there who are, would do you know, these things. I mean, people have burned embassies, people have killed people, and so on and so forth. So you have to really think about what you do. So how smart are such people that they know what would happen, and then they go on purpose, because they think, oh, it's freedom of speech. Oh, it's so much freedom of speech. They go on purpose, and they do this. And then they know what's going to happen. They know what are the aftermaths. Let's see. They knew what they were getting into they had to know. when they started it. I've watched interviews with them, right. and they said that they realized that this was going to be, you know, pushing the envelope. But they so why do you want to do it? Is that I mean, are you that irrational that you want to cause harm to yourself and to your families? Like, why would you do that? Why would you do something in the name of freedom of speech when it calls for you know you basically inviting violence? It insults so many people when you're doing that. And then you're saying, well, you know, it's for freedom of speech. It's for freedom of speech, freedom of speech. Everyone claims freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of this and freedom of that. But for example, you know, with the whole controversial issue of Obama, so freedom of speech. Okay, people say, well, you can say whatever you want as long as it does not invite violence, if it does not cause violence, and so on and so on. But that's exactly what these guys are doing. It causes violence. But when... So they say that if you don't invite violence, hey, it's freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want. Now, they are saying things that are inviting violence upon them. 
defining beam of violence, right? They know what the outcomes are. Now, let's look at what the Obama, uh, you know, and his entourage have said. Recently, there's been a whole issue about the death sentence that's been sent pretty much to Anwar al one of the cleric, Muslim clerics who's supposed to be linked with Al-Qaeda. But he, what does he say? Okay, even if he calls, he calls for violence. Okay, no one's saying we're, we, we don't agree with that. Many scholars actually have gone and actually spoke against that and, you know, it's all over. Please look at it. But, uh, and I recently watched an interview of, over the telephone from a Saudi scholar, you know, re refuting uh, Anwar al -Aki. Anyhow, whatever that, you know. But the thing is that he was also speaking, okay, on jihad and calling people to do this, to America and that, and fighting and, you know. But he was doing the same thing as these guys. Freedom of speech, right? He can say whatever he wants. But people say, no, no, he's inviting to violence. But these guys are also inviting to violence. They know exactly, as you know, the outcome of someone preaching for jihad and calling people to do bad things against. You know also the outcome of insulting Prophet Muhammad and depicting him like that as a bear and so on and so forth. And then people, what they will do. You know, you've seen it. So why? How, how much sense do these people have in their mind? And then you look at freedom of expression. I mean, just amazing. Amazing double standards for people. People talk, you know, now in France about a, a, a full ban in public of the niqab. They say, oh, French is such, you know, France is such a, a freedom of expression country. You have to express yourself. It is degrading. But if a woman wants to express herself by wearing the niqab, people say, no, no, no. But if she wants to express herself by putting a piercing in her tongue or in her nose and looking like a pig and so on and so forth, no one cares because, you know, that's free of expression. You know, and let's look at the uh, beautiful, you know, video by one of our brothers here, uh, about this guy, about hypocrisy. And look at this, the same person who interviews the guy. Look what he says here. Basically, this this uh, this reporting here is saying that we should do you know we can do whatever. What's you know such hurting feelings of Muslims if we want to you know talk you know depict Prophet Muhammad? What's the big deal? It's freedom of expression, freedom of speech. The Muslim guys say, oh, but you're insulting me. freedom of expression and you know insulting. You know they go hand in hand. You have a limit. Right? That's what the other person is saying. But this guy is saying, no, 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 no. You can say whatever you want. What about it? You know? So what? It's about you know, the feelings. It's a form of self-censorship, he says. He says, re re freedom of expression and respect the others go hand in hand. That's what this guy says, the Muslim, which is true. He says, you should have the right to do a caricature of Muhammad or a rabbi of Jesus. But let's see what says later on. Same journalist. Watch, watch what he said. Don't you think you should have apologized for your action? This person here, a comedian played an Orthodox Jew, and he made fun of some Holocaust issues. And now this guy, the same guy, is taking it. Don't you think you should say story that he wasn't funny, that I might have hurt your feelings? It was stupid of me. Don't you think you should have said that? The same guy who said, he says, no, the other guy says, it's part of my job. So look at the flip, right? First of all, he says, I find your action excusable. I'm shocked. He's like, we live in a country where it's free to express yourself, right? Express yourself. What does it matter? The same thing that he was arguing for against the Muslims for. And he says, oh, because of the Holocaust, it creates a little problem, it creates a problem now. Now that it's about the Holocaust, it's a problem. This guy says, what about black slavery? We, we mock black people all the time. 400 years of slavery. That's Holocaust right there. Look at the double standard of these people. That guy, first of all, and we'll, we'll do the split screen here. Look, right here. Same guy, same reporter, talking against the Muslims, saying, oh, you should express yourself. What? 
make Pickering uh, carry uh, a drawing of Muhammad. Who cares if people get angry? And here, he's questioning that guy, why did he play at Orthodox Jews and made fun of the Holocaust and so on and so forth. So, you know, I mean, we live in a world where people don't use their brains anymore. They just talk because they talk as Allah says. They take their nafs, their selves as gods.